Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for the word on this morning. Father, we thank you right now, God, that you blessed us all just to wake up this morning. And Father, as we get ready to hear this word, we pray that our ears are open to re to hear and that our heart is open to receive, oh God. We pray, Lord God, that the word will forever be in our hearts, oh God, and that it will transform us and renew us, oh God, and allow us to be all that you have called and anointed us to be oh god and father i pray that you speak through me in the name of jesus we say amen 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 we're gonna go right into the word on this morning um open up your bibles to proverbs three and five proverbs three and five hallelujah i say this often because i don't take it lightly every time that i prepare to minister and share a word i'm always in prayer and asking god what will we say to the people i'm not one of those uh ministers that believe that it's okay to just get up and say anything no because god has trust you with this word and he's trusting you to speak to his children so don't take it lightly you have to get before god and see what is is God saying amen we don't want nothing stale we want fresh word hallelujah we want a rhema word a right now word and the word today is trust me I was in sleep and a lot of times I'm half asleep and half awake and I could hear the voice of the Lord and God was saying tell my people trust me he said trust me this morning amen Proverbs 3 and 5 says trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. Now, you know, that's a familiar passage, and we say it all the time. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. But sometimes it's easier said than done, right? Sometimes we just want to put our own hands in it. We just want to do it ourselves when God is saying, no, trust me. Trust me. You know, this holiday season, those, those two weeks or so, um, I was with my family, and we had a lot of different little family events and family outings. Praise God, we was even able to be together as a church. Amen. You know, so all these different times, you know, I was with the family, and um, we were supposed to have a, a housewarming in New Orleans, but it, it was rescheduled. Right. But my brother was like, well, we still could go. I'm like, yeah, we still could go, you know. So we went to New Orleans for just like a couple of days. My mom, my brother, and we went to visit our relatives. And so um, everybody, of course, is some was still working. Some were on vacation. So my aunt said, well, on this day, at this time, we're going to go to a restaurant and we'll all meet up, you know, so we can have that family time together. Now, because I trust my aunt and I know um, she wouldn't steer us wrong, I trusted the restaurant she picked for us. I'm like, well, she live here. She ought to know the places, right? She know what I like to eat, so it ought to be okay. But because I trust her and I believe her and she's never failed me or led me wrong, we all went to this place. We went to this place called New Orleans Food and Spirit or something like that. And I remember all of us eating. We all chose different foods. And my mom said, I've never been to a restaurant where everything was good. I'm like, yeah, everything is good. I enjoyed this food. And y'all, I've been dreaming about these little egg rolls that they had. You know, when can I get back to it? And I'm saying that to say that I trusted my aunt. But now that I've been there and I've tasted it for myself, I can refer other people. And if people trust me, they could trust my recommendation, right? So it's not that you have faith in nobody else. You have faith in what you've done. You've experienced it, so now I can trust that every time I go to this restaurant, they most likely are going to deliver. You know, I can expect something good. And God is the same way. Sometimes people don't always know them for themselves, right? But if your family member or your friend, you see a change in them, you're like, you know what? I trust my friend. I trust my grandmother. These prayers that she's praying, God is moving. So it's like you, you begin to say, you know what? Let me try this, God. Let me try this church. Let me see what is God doing. And so in this hour, God is saying, trust me. He alone is trustworthy. 
His word is trustworthy. You know, when we speak the word, we say his word will go out and not return void. So we trust the Bible. Amen. Now, you know, I'm sure you guys have seen it. It's so much controversy around the Bible. People are challenging the Bible more now than ever before. But, you know, we even have scientific proof of some of the things that's been in the Bible. So it's like, okay, you're trying to dismiss it. But what about all this scientific proof that we have? A lot of things are coming up and showing that the Bible is real and the Bible is true. So we have to begin to trust God at his word. And one thing I like about it, if it's anything that you feel uncomfortable with, you can pray about it. You can pray about it, and God will give you revelation in your heart. He will give you confirmation of his word. And, you know, if you've ever had anything happen in your life and you see what God came through for you, you could trust that. You could trust that. To trust is to believe in the reliability, the truth, the ability or strength of something, and that something is God. Hallelujah. You know, when I'm going through trials and tribulations or, you know, if there's something heavy on me, I may think about it and I'll be riding in my car and all of a sudden I just say to myself, God, I trust you. God, I trust you. I'll be in the kitchen and if I think about it, I'll be like, God, I trust you. Because the Bible says that God knows the ending from the beginning. Amen. And so we trust that he knows what's best for us. Things don't always go out um, like we planned. Amen. Relationships. We thinking it's going to be one way to turn out something totally different. But we have to trust that God is making provisions for us. Amen. Sometimes even in a job, you're thinking this is going to be the one. This, this, this is going to be a good place for me. And it doesn't always work out like we planned. But we have to trust God. You know, all this stuff that's going on with Southwest, uh, with the delayed flights and, and um, the canceled flights and just all that drama. And I was looking at the news and I was looking at different people say, well, one lady said she missed her destination wedding. Now, y'all know that costs money, a lot of planning. And I'm like, uh, that sounds like a lawsuit to me, you know. But I was looking at the news, and I was looking at all these people. One lady said her grandmother passed away, but had she been on her original flight, she would have had a couple of days with her. You can't never get that back. Yeah. You, it's not enough money to bring that back. You know what I'm saying? But I was looking at that, and I was saying to myself, hmm, my brother just retired a few months ago. So if something really goes down, or they go out of business, or anything happens, God has already protected my brother because he's retired. He's not in that anymore, right? So that's why we have to trust God. Now, to other people, they like probably like, oh, well, you still in good health. You know, I wouldn't retire if I was you. You know, you know, put in a few more years. But when you trust God, you know God will take care of you. He can take care of you better than anybody else can. Now, I don't know what's going to happen, and I do wish them well because that's a lot of people's jobs. But I know right now, whatever happens, God already took care of my brother. We got to trust him. And a lot of times, saints, it does not make sense. When you look at it with your physical eye, you're like, oh, why God want me to do this? This don't even make any sense. But trust him. Just trust him. Amen. Let us look at another scripture. Glory to God. This morning, God is saying, trust me. Let's look at Psalms 37, verses 3 through 6. Psalms 37, verses 3 through 6. When I was doing my research, you know, in Psalms alone, not the whole Bible, but just in Psalms alone, there are over 39 scriptures that refer to trust. I believe God is telling us to trust him because that's just in Psalms. I didn't even do it for the whole Bible, just in Psalms alone. And, you know, most of Psalms is written by David. David went through some things, but he knew that he could trust God. Amen. Psalms 37, 3 through 6. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do this. 
He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Trust in the Lord and do good. You know, this is still the, the new year. We're still telling everybody happy new year. We're, we're still excited. We're still setting goals for the new year. But you can set all the goals you want. If you don't trust God, can it really come to pass? The word of God just says, take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Amen? We can't put our trust in man. Man will let you down. The very people that you think you can trust, sometimes they really let you down. You, you'd be surprised that the people you thought was a friend is really an enemy. Jealous envious you know but that's why you don't put your trust in them you put your trust in God and you allow God to make a way for you trust in the Lord and do good dwell in the land and enjoy safe pastor take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart commit your way to the Lord you have to make a commitment to God and say God I trust you I believe in you I have faith in you this situation I am in I don't know how I'm going to come out but I trust you to bring me out why because the word teaches me that you will fight all my battles the battle doesn't belong to me, but it belongs to God. So I trust him. If I'm in debt, I trust him to bring me out. Hallelujah. If I am going through a circumstance, a trial or a tribulation, I trust him to bring me out. And just like Mimi said earlier, he done it once. He could do it again. There is nothing too hard for God. Nothing is impossible with God. And friend, I've been there. I've been there where I'm like, okay, God, when you going to come through? <laughs> like, you taking too long. <laughs> What's going on? Like, uh, when you going to come through? When are you going to answer? And I could hear him saying, Christina, trust me. Trust me. Trust me. There are some situations that have happened in my life that if I didn't trust God, I wouldn't have made it. I wouldn't have made it. But because of my faith and my trust in God, hallelujah, I came out on the other side all right. Amen. Hallelujah. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Listen, I have had situations happen in my life where I'm ready to go off on somebody, tell somebody something, you know. But God said, no, trust me. And I've seen him do it. He can handle people and situations way better than you can. Sometimes I even feel sorry for him because I'm like, you should have did that. Because God is going to uh, take care of you. Because he will, he will vindicate you. He will. And that's why he tells us to pray for our enemies. And we should. We should pray for our enemies. You know, I don't wish bad upon nobody. But you have to be careful what you do to God's children. He says, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. And people take that to literally be the prophets. But no, that's any of his children. It's for all of his children. People have to be careful how they treat you. And so that's why you don't have to take it personal. You don't have to blast them on social media. Hallelujah. You don't have to key their car. <laughs> you don't have to do none of that. Trust God. Trust God. People will have to come to you and repent. If they've done you wrong, they will have to come to you and apologize. So that's why you just, again, trust God. Listen, this is the takeaway from today. Amen. Just the takeaway. This is what I want you to receive from this word today. Build your relationship with God. The more trust you will have in him. We all know in just in regular relationships, you know, when you first meet in somebody, it could be a friend, a boyfriend, a husband, a wife, whoever. But when you first meet them, you don't always have a lot of trust for them because you don't really know them that well. You don't know if they're trustworthy. But the more you get to know them and the more you begin to build a relationship, the better the trust becomes, right? Well, it's the same way with God. Maybe you might not trust him that much because you didn't grow up in church. You don't know God like that. It's okay. Get to know him. And the more you learn his word, the more you get in his presence, amen, the trust will come. And you will begin to build your trust and your faith in him in such a way that people can't shake you. And I'm telling you, in this hour, you have to trust him because they're already trying to shake people's faith. They're already trying to pull people away from God. They're already trying to pull people away from the Bible, from his word. And if you really read it, the word, it even talks about an antichrist. So we know that these things are going to come. But where will you stand? 
Where will you be with God? Will you have enough trust and faith and believe in him that he'll take care of you? Hallelujah. You know, um, I've mentioned to different people, you know, about my father and my brother passed uh, when they died like four days apart. That was really something major for me because I had to learn to trust totally and completely on God. Why? Because anything that I really needed, I can go to my daddy. I can go to my brother. Amen. And what I love about it is if they couldn't get it done, my daddy really, he, he was really gifted and talented. It was a lot of things that he could do. But if it was something he couldn't do, he going to make it happen meaning he'll hire somebody to do it and pay them if necessary. So there was always a bit of trust that went to them because I, they, they've been trustworthy. I know that I can count on them. But guess what? When they're not here, who you going to trust in? Who you going to trust in? So I had to trust God. I had to say, okay, God, this has happened. Can you make a way for me? I mean, just recently, um, it was about a month ago, I was having trouble with my car, and I was like, what is going on with this car? And I knew I didn't have a lot of money to go take it to the shop, so I had to wait, and I had to trust God. And my brother's friend, you know, he used to be a mechanic, and uh, he was like, Chris, I'll come check it out for you. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you know, he came to check it out. It wasn't a big deal. I, I hired this person to, to take care of it, and it was done. Now, mind you, had my dad and my brother been here, they would have took care of it. It would have been okay. You know, I almost waited three weeks for my car to get done. But once it was done, it was fixed. But I'm saying that to say you have to get to a place where you just trust God. Trust God. Amen. Trust him when you can't trace him. Sometimes you can't trace him. Sometimes you feel like you're by yourself, and it's just an illusion. No, he's there. He's there. He's there all the way. He's, he's allowing these things to happen to your life because all things are going to work together for your good. We have to go through some things in life. We can't minister to somebody if we've never been through it. Amen. We can't, we can't testify to somebody if we've never had um, the experience. That's where the testimony comes from. You have to even trust that. You know, I've been watching little clips of, of Jennifer Hudson and her, um, her, her show she has now. And I remember seeing her um, talking to one of these celebrities. And they mentioned, like, their father passing away. And, and they were kind of, like, sharing a little bit of their story. And she was so sympathetic, right? But if you all know her mother, her brother, and her little, uh, I think that was her nephew. Remember, she had, like, three family members die at one time. They were murdered. Well... Fast forward years later, here she is talking to somebody on a major platform, and she's able to relate. She's sympathetic. Why? Because she's been there. Now, do we want to go through something like that? No, we don't. No, we don't. But now God has her on such a large platform that people see her, right? And we don't know who was watching that needed to hear both their stories and testimonies that would encourage them to say, you know what? If they made it through it, I'll make it through it too. I can hang on just a little bit longer, especially during the holiday season. We already know statistics show that's when people are the most depressed. That's when people commit the most suicide. So we don't know. Maybe them turning on that television just that one little moment encouraged them to hang on just a little while longer. So, yes, there's some tough situations that will happen in life that we don't want to go through. But trust God anyhow. Hallelujah. Trust him when you can't trace him. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. God, we trust you this morning. We trust you, Lord God, with all of our faith and with all of our strength. We believe by faith, oh God, that everything that we're going through in this hour, that it will work together for our good. Father, we trust you so much, God, that even when it doesn't make sense, we believe that it's going to work out for our good. Father, we love you this morning. Hallelujah. We honor you this morning. We believe, Lord God, that you are moving by faith on our behalf. Even on this morning, oh God, we believe just as we have read the word that if we delight ourselves in you, you will give us the desires of our heart. We trust you this morning. It's in Jesus' name, hallelujah, we say amen. Amen, amen, amen.